Good morning, you guys, and welcome back. So I want to bring you some identification when it comes to sometimes often a misconception, especially when you're dealing with certain dwarf species of shrimp, whether that be your common Neocaridina strains, your Caridina species, so on and so forth. And that is being identified uh, through different terminology that's been used throughout the hobby and so forth. Uh, and that would be either the uh, green fungus disease, the green spot disease, the green egg disease, uh, what have you, which is simply put your Elobiopsidae. So I will add a link in description uh, below to the exact specifics and basis and scientific terminology behind that. But I really want to simplify it and break it down for you guys. And I did obtain one of my cherry grade Neocaridina shrimp a female here which is actually uh, buried up and we talked about this in previous videos as far as identifying and understanding the difference between a settled to a buried and how the transition and so forth and the fertilization process takes place and I'll try to also link that somewhere either in the end card uh, at the end of this video or in the description below so you can go ahead and take a look at that if you want more specifics and details behind it. and take a look here at this specific uh, cherry shrimp uh, just so I can show you guys that oftentimes somebody would be alarmed and uh, kind of assume that they're having some parasitic breakout and catastrophe is going to take place and I have to uh, uh, reassure you guys that this is not a form of elobiopsidae but rather just a very common um, misconception that I find more and more and more uh, in the hobby because somebody hears somebody had a breakout of Elobiopsidae and now they identify some green eggs which is very very common in different strains of shrimp. You can see right here if you look down at the top of the carapace you can see the green coloration uh, as we try to focus the camera here um, and then somebody may be alarmed and I'll show you here in just a moment so stay tuned all right you guys so we are back as you can see here um, broadside and you can see the indicator and I could see where somebody may be new in the hobby and might be concerned uh, that this could be a form of fungus but I have to reassure you as you look closer and we're gonna go ahead and reposition the camera here um, to get a little bit better angle and view uh, so you can actually identify uh, a buried shrimp a legit buried female which is housing uh, green eggs and you can see the circular indication um, and so forth there and if we actually tipped her a little bit let's see if we can focus uh, there you go you can clearly see there that those are actual uh, buried eggs there you go let's see all right there's a little bit better view and then the easiest way to explain the elobiopsidae and I'll try to include somewhere in here either off to the side But I've had Elobiopsidae and I've lost um, about a year ago over 2,000 Neocaridina shrimp and you can go back and look at it. That was in my beginning of repertoire videos. But you can see right here um, that there's no feathering effect. And that's the easiest way I could explain uh, when you're dealing with um, uh, shrimp that has uh, Elobiopsidae. We're going to go ahead and get her back into the tank, so stay tuned. Alright you guys, we're going to go ahead and get her back into her tank. And you can clearly see she is right there. And we'll go ahead and release her. She is just fine, swimming about. And going back to eating as shrimp. 
shrimp do. And I hope nobody does have to encounter the effects of Elabaps today because it is a catastrophic um, parasitic fungal issue that can definitely um, wipe out entire colony quite quickly. Um, at that time, back last November, uh, thereabouts, when my catastrophe took place, I lost over 2,000 really high-end, high-grade lines that took me a lot of years to get to that point as far as selective breeding and so forth uh, with the Neocaridina shrimp. I had some really nice Sakura and even fire red lines, and unfortunately I don't have any video or photos because I wasn't doing any of that uh, at the time, but um, it wiped out. I did confirm and I share more about how I went about the process of confirming and so forth in, in other videos and live streams and that, but um, just want to give you guys a quick tip to not be necessarily alarmed. Uh, should be something, just do your due diligence, understand what livestock, understand your shrimp, understand uh, that things can happen in the hobby, understand how to reduce and minimize that potential. Uh, doesn't mean you can completely uh, get rid of it, but um, utilizing the most uh, effectiveness and opportunities in order to reduce the exposure and that potential exposure and unnecessary things when it comes to importation and so forth. Make sure the resource that you get them from is a reputable resource and uh, and so forth. So again, a lot of that is really on you guys as the uh, consumer of whatever livestock you're bringing in and that just doesn't go for a shrimp, that goes for any uh, specimens that you may be keeping. So uh, whether that be plants, that's why I always put emphasis on quarantine, do your due diligence, understand the, the quarantine process, understand how that works, get yourself familiar with it. Uh, you can't just watch a video and understand it, you have to live it, you have to experience it. A lot of that unfortunately comes through trial and error. So when you've been in the hobby for a decade or more like myself and other people, um, you are going to have your fair share of losses. And unfortunately, we're here to express to you guys to not repeat some of those unnecessary mistakes that could have been prevented and avoided. Uh, had you just simply done your due diligence in quarantine. So that's why I always say quarantine plants, even if it's livestock from us, um, I have very much nothing but confidence in our livestock and we do our due diligence to ensure that everything's healthy before it's sent to uh, any of our consumers and so forth. Uh, but we still always say quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. So but with that being said, I always stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on, happy fishing. And we'll talk to you guys right back here on the next one.